Well, hello everybody. It's lovely to be with you again today just to share another little thought from the scriptures. It's hard to believe it's only a few days now to the youth mission and we're looking forward very much to it. So get busy, spread the word and let others know that it's on. One of the characteristics when a man and a woman and a young person get saved is that they want to tell others the good news. They want to spread the gospel. And I think of that great servant of the Lord, George Muller. And George Muller had five friends and he prayed for them every day. Four of them were saved during his lifetime and the fifth one got saved just after he died. And it's wonderful and it thrills your heart when you hear of other precious souls coming to the Saviour. But I want to leave with you today, Matthew 4 and the verse 19. This is a verse of scripture just that you can focus on today and really meditate on as I have been. When the Lord Jesus states, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. What a text. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And I remember as a young lad going fishing for the first time and catching two trout and such excitement, such buzz when you saw that that little float going down under the water and, and getting the tug on the line and bringing in the fish and you went home and you were able to tell everybody what happened. But here the Lord Jesus Christ is reminding us to win souls and to, to follow him and to become fishers of men is the greatest privilege of all. And I want us to focus on that today, that we have an obligation to win people to him. And no wonder the Bible tells us, he that winneth souls is wise. William Booth was the founder of the Salvation Army. He again was a wonderful servant of God. William Booth was asked to sign the guest book of King Edward VII. And he summed up his life's work. He said, some men's ambition is art. Some men's ambition is fame. Some men's ambition is gold. But my ambition, said Booth, is the soul's of men. William Booth was a man that led all on the altar and he saw the Lord move in a mighty way. And I just want to leave three simple thoughts from our text, Matthew 4 and the verse 19. First of all, I want you to realize the people who were called Peter, Andrew, James and John, simple fishermen, simple fishermen. They had no great theological training. They had no great education. And it's always amazing the people that God calls. I wonder why he picked fishermen. You see, to be a good fisherman, you need to have certain qualities or certain skills. You need to have patience. You need to have a work ethic. You need to be able to recover from setbacks. You need to have determination. And the Lord's work is exactly the same. And no wonder the Apostle Paul reminds us that God chooses the foolish things of the world to confound the ways. These men weren't promised a salary. They weren't promised a house or a car or a pension or anything materially, but yet they were used in a mighty way in the New Testament. Again, I was even thinking of D.L. Moody. He was converted at age 18. A man that worked in a shoe store, again, had no great education, but saw thousands come to Christ because he was willing to be used. A man that travelled the world preaching the gospel and he let God use him and he was available and that's what God is looking for. Amy Carmichael was the same. A young woman from Malay County Down who came to Belfast and she reached the mill workers and that was God moulding her and making her and then she went on to India and spent over 50 years without furlough rescuing children from slavery. Amazing. The people who were called, but notice secondly in this verse, the person who called them, the Lord Jesus states, follow me. What a person to call you. He says to Peter, Andrew, James and John, he says, follow me. Maybe today the Lord is saying to you, follow me. Maybe I'm speaking to somebody and the Lord is calling you into his service. Maybe to preach, maybe to sing, maybe to go to the mission field, maybe to work with children. These four men left all. They heard the call, they left all, and they followed the Lord. Yes, it can be fearful. Yes, you're going into the unknown. But you know, the most dangerous place for a Christian is outside the will of God. Did you know that? 
That is the most dangerous place for a Christian. But when you're in the will of God, everything works out. We often say it in Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, Don't we trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy paths. Matthew 9, verse 37, the Lord Jesus states, The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Will you be a laborer in Christ's harvest field? I know a man from Belfast, Sandy Row, uh, Jim McClellan, he's with the Lord now, but he was saved when he was 60 years of age. He sat in church for, for many, many years, was never converted, but at age 60, he was converted. God called him to Ethiopia, and he started a school, and he started a church, he started a clinic. And in 10 years, before the Lord took him home, he saw God move in a mighty, mighty way. You see, again, he was willing to be used. And then the third thing I see from this verse is the promise that was made. Jesus says, I will make you fishers of men. There's the people who were called, the person who called them, but then the promise that was made, I will make you fishers of men. Jesus makes his man. Jesus makes his woman. He makes his young person. How does he do that? Through trials, through personal experiences, through setbacks and even successes. And maybe even in this lockdown, God is molding you and God is making you. Even many of the greatest servants of God I know have had a life of difficulty. Have had a life of difficulty. But yet God still blessed them and God used them and they saw many precious souls come to Jesus. Oh, brothers and sisters, may we get the burden for the lost. May we get the burden to pray and to seek God in these final days of time. Even old Gypsy Smith, he was converted at age 16. He couldn't read, he couldn't write, he couldn't even preach, but the Lord taught him. He sat at the Lord's feet and he let the Lord mold him and make him. William Booth again saw his potential. Gypsy Smith had many crusades and he saw many souls, one for the master. The hymn writer penned, fill me, O Lord, with thy desire. For all who know not thee, then touch my lips with holy fire to speak of Calvary. Oh, that the Lord would touch us afresh today by the power of the Holy Spirit. We will finish with our text. Jesus states, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. We saw three simple pictures. The people who were called, the person who called them and the promise that was made. May we all become fishers of men. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the promises in your word. We thank you for the challenge in your word and the encouragement in your word. And Lord, I pray, including myself, that we would all become fishers of men. Lord, we have different gifts and talents and abilities, but help us to win precious souls for you. And Lord, we pray again, especially for the youth mission. We pray for young men. We pray for young women, even today, who don't know what way to turn in life. That Lord, they would listen to these videos and many would call upon your name. Thank you that somebody prayed for us. Somebody cared for us. Somebody witnessed to us. And we're here today, sinner saved by grace. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. Thank you for a roof over our head, for clothes on our back and food on our table. But above all, we thank you for the privilege of serving you. Bless all who listen to this video today. Bless our homes, bless our families, and pour out your spirit. So these things we ask in your beautiful name. Amen. May God bless you all today. Thank you for listening. Take care and stay safe.